Uh, I'm blessed to be here and uh, welcome all those of you that are watching via live stream. Uh, turn in your Bibles to 2 Timothy chapter 1. And I'd like to deal with uh, the issues that are facing every American and people groups around the world. Um, as we deal with this time of trouble, I want to talk about three things tonight. I want to talk about the spirit of fear. I want to talk about the virus itself. And I want to talk about the economy. The other day I was in a grocery store and I went there to get a non-related product. Uh, there was no, you know, uh, rush. There was no necessity. I just was doing my grocery shopping. And uh, I came across the uh, shelves where the toilet paper was supposed to be. And it was empty. So I went to the checkout stand and I asked the lady there, I said, ma'am, I said, uh, can you tell me what the deal is with the toilet paper? I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I just don't connect the, the, the lack of toilet paper or the rush on toilet paper with the virus. And she said, well, I guess everybody is afraid that they're going to be stuck at home for an uh, unspecified amount of time. They're going to need <laughs> a lot more toilet paper. Well, our son called us the other day and I asked him the same thing. I said, Ronnie, help me connect the dots here between the toilet paper and the virus. He laughed. He said, Dad, if you need 144 rolls of toilet paper to last you two weeks, you've got other problems. <laughs> and I think that's, that's true. You need to go have an examination or something. But people do funny things, stupid things when there's fear. Now, let's look at the scriptures. The Bible is very clear. Uh, it tells us that God has not given us a spirit of fear. You can say that out loud. God has not given us a spirit of fear. God has not given us a spirit of fear. But God has given us a spirit of power, love, and a sound mind. So first of all, you have to discern where the fear comes from. It's a spirit. The, the spirit of fear. Uh, Paul is talking about a demonic spirit. He's not talking about reverence or uh, you know, healthy uh, fear. He's talking about a demon spirit. God didn't give us a spirit of fear. Uh, fear does not come from God. God gives us the spirit of love, power, and a sound mind. Let me read you something that was sent to me the other day. Uh, I was shocked at this. Uh, this is um, a quote that was made by a Jewish rabbi on a Christian television program. And he says, that this virus is from heaven and God told him that he is uh, releasing a season of fear and panic. Now, first of all, this is irresponsible, unscriptural, and doesn't even match the DNA of God. Did you hear what the rabbi said? And not being critical of the rabbi, anybody could have said this. This um, virus is from heaven. And uh, God sent this season of fear and panic. And if President Trump does not call his national day of prayer, uh, call this a national day of prayer, his presidency will be in jeopardy. Well, I have to happen to have a copy of President uh, Trump's national day of prayer. It, it, it's a prayer based on the Word of God. And we prayed uh, on the national day of prayer on last Sunday. And the president did call a national day of prayer. But I couldn't believe that this rabbi had pronounced this uh, unnecessary and irresponsible and unscriptural statement. But there are a lot of people that feel that. And I know some of you probably think, okay, where did this come from? Why is it coming? Well, I'm going to endeavor to show you some of the things that the Bible tells us, not what I think. Uh, first of all, we need to deal with this spirit of fear. How do we know when something comes in our midst where it comes from, and what its purpose is. You can discern the source and the purpose by the manifestation. The spirit of fear, the Bible says in 1 John 14, 27, has torment. Yes. Torment does not come from God. Now you have to establish this, first of all, if you're going to thrive in perilous times, if you're going to overcome, if you're going to succeed, if you're going to accomplish, if you're going to 
uh, go forward. So the, the, the spirit of fear has torment. God did not send the spirit of fear. God doesn't have the spirit of fear. God doesn't have a virus. So he couldn't have sent the virus from heaven. And he never uses in today, in the New Testament, the New Covenant, he has never used uh, these uh, punishments to get people's attention or close to him. A lot of people believe that. I hear preachers all the time saying that, you know, God's in control. Well, what does that mean? Yeah. They think that it means that everything that happens is of God. Well, you can just go to the Bible. Common sense can tell you that that's not true. Uh, God is going to send us the spirit of power, the spirit of love, and a sound, disciplined mind. So you've got to settle the issue with fear, or you'll never be able to use your faith to overcome anything. The Bible says that perfect love casts out fear. Yeah. Well, the Bible says that the house divided against itself will fall. So if God's double-minded, then we're all in trouble. Perfect love casts out all fear. You can always identify the source and the purpose of a thing when you see what it produces. Yeah. Jesus said in John 10, 10, the thief came to do what? Steal, kill, and destroy. But I am come, Jesus said, that you might have life and have it more abundantly. In uh, Luke chapter 9, we can turn over there. And you may remember this event. I, I've, I've thought it was kind of funny over the years, but the Holy Spirit brought it back to me. Uh, Luke chapter 9 and verse 56. For the Son of Man is not come to destroy men's lives, but to save them. This is where, you know, Peter, James, and John were the, uh, the knit group around Jesus, and sometimes they'd get a little bit aggressive and they want to call fire from down heaven and burn up people. And Jesus said, hey, guys, you would forgotten what spirit you're of. I didn't come to destroy men's lives. I came to save them. We have a, an unprecedented opportunity today to minister to the lost, yeah. the people that are afraid, Christians that are fearful, Now's a great time to demonstrate your faith and your love and your confidence in the Word of God. Okay, uh, love casts out fear. So you need to do that right now. You need to deal with the spirit of fear wherever you're watching. And you need to deal with it at work if you're still working in your neighborhood. You need to deal with the spirit of fear because that's what's driving people. And, and fear is, is a, a, a disaster waiting to happen. Uh, all right, now let's deal with the virus itself. Go over to Psalm 91. I think Psalm 91 is getting more, <laughs> more recognition uh, than it ever has. People that don't even know uh, what it says are Christians that uh, ha have never really read it. Uh, let's see, Job Psalms. Psalm 91, and Jeannie and I read this uh, uh, on a daily basis. I'll tell you something else that we do on a daily basis is we take communion. Uh, in 1 Corinthians 11, 23 through 33, uh, we discern the body of the Lord, the blood of the Lord. You can do all these things to protect you. Yeah. You, you know, hand sanitizer is good for your hands, but Psalm 91 and communion every day is good for Everything, spirit, soul, and body. Psalm 91, and uh, I'll begin with verse 3. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge, my fortress, my God, and Him will I trust. Surely He will deliver me from the snare of the fowler and from the noise and pestilence. God will deliver you from the pestilence. He'll cover you with His feathers under His wings you'll trust. His truth shall be your shielded buckler. You shall not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. Now, I know this is a hard saying. I heard on the news the other day that if the pandemic continues to grow worldwide, Iran has probably been the hardest hit. We hear a lot about Italy but they're projecting that by the summer months, 
Iran could have over a million people die of this virus. So a thousand will fall at your side, 10,000 at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. Only with your eyes shall you behold and see the reward of the wicked. Because you've made the Lord, which is your refuge, the most high, your habitation. Therefore, there shall no evil befall you, neither shall any plague come near your dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. Now, let me stop there just a minute. And let me recall, if you've ever read John G. Lake's book, um, on our television network, VTN, we run uh, John G. Lake's uh, successor, who is Curry Blake. We run his program, and he is the uh, caretaker of the John G. Lake Ministries. Uh, John G. Lake's son, uh, daughter and son-in-law turned it over to him. John G. Lake was a missionary to Africa. And uh, John G. Lake um, was burying people that had died of the bubonic plague. This is right around the turn of the century. And uh, he and a Dutchman were burying all these people. The medical missionaries came and said, uh, Dr. Lake said, uh, what are you doing to protect yourself from this virus? He said, uh, the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. Uh, they said, pardon us, we don't, what is that? Romans chapter 8, verses 1, 2, and 3. The law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. Okay. He said, let me demonstrate this for you. You see that corpse over there? There's foam coming out of its mouth. Go over there and take a stick. Take some of that foam, the germs coming out of that corpse mouth and put it in my hand and then put your microscope on my hand and see what happens to those germs. <laughs> he said, are you sure you want to do this? Absolutely. So they put the germs in his hand, put the microscope on it and to their amazement, when the germs touched his hand, the germs died. They said, what is that? He said, that's the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. Yes. It makes you free from the law of sin and death. Germs, virus, all those things operate under the law of sin and death. So even medical doctors will tell you when you're stressed, when you're fearful and afraid, it opens your pores to let a virus or a germ in. But if you remain cool, calm, and collected, the pores in your skin stay closed. Now, Jeannie and I have ministered all over the world on every continent but one. And we have ministered in leper colonies. They don't call them that anymore. There's one here in the United States down in Carville, Louisiana. We've ministered in that one. I've ministered the one in the Philippines. Now, people come in, they have no noses, no ears, no eyes. Uh, no fingers, and we laid hands on them. Uh, in the Philippines, it's much worse because they don't have the care that we have here in the U.S. They call them Hansen's disease now, treatment centers. But the first time I prayed for these people, uh, they just wept when you laid hands on them because nobody wants to touch them, understandably. But, you know, leprosy or Hansen's disease is not transmitted uh, like it was, of course, as you read in the Bible. It's always been God's will to heal anybody and everybody. But we weren't afraid to lay hands on these people. We weren't afraid to lay hands on people that had diseases. We should not be afraid or we will be ineffective. Yes. Do you understand that we're the body of Christ yes. and we have an opportunity now to show the strength of God, the love of God? So God has provided uh, supernatural protection for you. Now, let me go to the third area that I said I wanted to cover. The spirit of fear, the virus itself, and the economy. In Genesis 26, and you heard Pastor Michelle refer to this a while ago. In Genesis 26, it tells us that uh, this is the second famine. Uh, it says uh, there was a famine in the land beside the first famine, uh, that was in the days of Abraham. And Isaac went to Abimelech, king of Philistines, unto Gerar. And the Lord appeared unto him and said, Go not down to Egypt. Now, you can liken the famine to the virus. Everybody's leaving town. There's nothing there. Everybody, everything's shut down. The factories are shut down. The farm workers are... Everybody's going. 
just like today. And, and God told Isaac, said, do not leave. Stay right here and I will be with you. And I will bless you. For unto you and unto your seed will I give all these countries. He said, I will perform the oath which I swear unto Abraham your father. I will keep my end of the covenant. I will make your seed to multiply as the stars of heaven. I'll give unto the seed all these countries in your seed shall all nations of the earth be blessed. Because Abraham obeyed my voice, kept my charge and my covenants, my commandments, my statutes, and my law. All right, now go down to verse 12. Isaac sowed in that land and received in the same year a hundredfold. Not a hundred times. A hundredfold is an indefinite continued return. It's your seed coming back to you in its fullest form, fullest harvest. And he said, uh, I blessed him with a hundredfold, and the man waxed great, went forward, and grew until he became very great. Now, we also have another opportunity, not only to witness to people, to minister to people, to show them love, power, our soundness of mind, pray for them to be healed if they're sick, pray for them to be encouraged, not to fear, we also have an opportunity to continue to sow. We don't want to quit. We don't stop. We continue to invest in the kingdom of God. Amen. Now, uh, I, I was listening to different financial experts uh, talk about the, uh, uh, the financial aspect of uh, the virus. And you may be affected by it. You may have been laid off or whatever. Uh, our one of our granddaughters and her husband live in Nashville, Tennessee, and they work for the Hilton Hotel Corporation. And they've already laid off 60% of their staff. And the hotel is only 20% occupancy. So we know that people are losing jobs. We know the government's trying to help. And it's because of fear. People are withholding. They're holding back. Proverbs 11 says, don't withhold more than is fitting. We as, uh, 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 as all people, as Christians, we need to keep supporting our churches, keep supporting ministries. I know many ministries now that have had to cancel uh, crusades. And uh, we were supposed to go to a conference uh, next month. And they called us and said, we're going to have to cancel because people told us they're not coming. The airlines are shut down. The, some of the countries they were coming from have told them, if you go to America and you get ready to come back home, you'll have to quarantine your whole family for two weeks. So when fear comes, people shut down. Here is evidence that God is with you. Yes. Don't stop giving. In fact, if you have cash and you have some money, now's the time to buy. I heard the other day where interest rates are to 0%. If you want to go buy a house, <laughs> this is the best time. Uh, our, the, the person that oversees uh, our financial investments uh, portfolio and has for years sent out an email said, whatever you do, don't sell anything. You haven't lost it until you sell it. Oh, it may have gone down on paper, but it's going to come back up. So you can't let the spirit of fear uh, drive you. You have to uh, listen to the spirit of God. Uh, just keep investing. Keep sowing, and it is all going to come back to you. You know, I, I told my wife, I said, you know, the grocery stores that are, you know, hoarding and uh, shortages and, and the people that are hoarding and shortages and buying up stuff and selling it online. If I were a merchant today and I had a big box store or, uh, you know, a big uh, restaurant or something, you know, during Christmas and Thanksgiving, they put out these big islands of cranberry sauce and pumpkin and, you know, whatever they're selling, uh, turkey and dressing. They put big islands out in the middle of the floor on a pallet. That's what I would do. I would go get all the hand sanitizer and all the toilet paper, put it on a big island in the middle of the floor and say, we appreciate your business. Take one of these as our compliments. No charge. Oh, Nobody would ever think of anything like that because of fear. 
but you would endure. Now, Chick-fil-A did the other day. They, they gave a thousand chicken sandwiches to a business or whatever. And I saw one interview with one uh, hotel owner down in Florida because all the hotels are closed, uh, Orlando and uh, Disney World and all that kind of stuff. And they interviewed this one guy. And they said, sir, what about you? Are you laying off staff? He said, nope, not one of them. He said, all our staff is going to continue to work and continue to get paid. And they said, how can you do that? Now listen to this. He said, because I have no debt. This hotel owes nobody anything. And it was a big hotel. And he said, secondly, we love people. We love our staff. Yeah. Well, what did Paul say? God's not giving you a spirit of fear, but power, love, and a sound mind. So now's the time for us to demonstrate our faith. I really believe that it's time for the body of Christ to wake up and for the believers to ask themselves this question. Am I really a believer? It's time for the believers to decide whether they're believers or not yes. and get out of their rabbit holes and stop hoarding, start, stop being fearful. Oh, I know we have to obey the government and, and we should and the Bible tells us to obey the laws of the land and I know it's, it's good for us to uh, practice, what is it, social distancing and it's good for us to do everything we can in the natural uh, to avoid the virus or communication uh, thereof. But, you know, we were supposed to go to our great-grandson's seventh birthday party uh, tomorrow. Well, yesterday, the president uh, quarantined, I guess you could say. He requested all senior citizens from 65 and over to stay home. Well, that affected us. I know, I know I don't look 65 or over, but yet that's what he told us to do. So I told my granddaughter, I said, well, I don't know. That's kind of a hard decision to make. And um, I hope little Jace will understand why Great Granny and Mimi are not there. Uh, but I said, you know, if I violate my president's request, now it's not an order yet, it's just a request. But he, I said, if I violate the authority that I submit myself to, that I pray for, um, and I disobey or rebel against it, how does that affect my witness? And am I opening the door for the enemy to come in? You know, I have no fear. I have no, uh, no reason to fear. I've faced issues like this uh, for years. Uh, we, we've been through all kinds of epidemics and pestilences and shortages and uh, Y2K and 9-11 uh, hurricane. I rode a hurricane out at sea one time in the Navy aboard ship. Uh, we have uh, weathered the swine flu, the, uh, you name it, and whatever comes your way. The gas shortage. I mean, we were traveling on the road full time when the gas shortage hit. We never were in a gas line and never uh, couldn't go anywhere. It, j it just depends on what you believe and if you're willing to act on what you believe. Now, I'm not talking about being foolish, presumptuous. I'm not talking about any of that. I'm not talking about tempting God. I'm just talking about standing on this word, yes. asking the Lord to lead, guide, and direct you. He'll show you what to do, where to go, where not to go, who to shake hands with, who not to <laughs> shake hands with. I mean, we do all the natural things, and we should, but we also have to demonstrate uh, the power of God. And I think it's a wake-up time for the body of Christ uh, to wake up and stand up and be the body of Christ. And, you know, I, I know a lot of churches are shut down, but you, you mark my word. If you're not careful, pastors, after this virus passes and all of the emergency is over with, if you're not careful, if you don't pay attention, you'll continue to dumb down your church. You'll continue to back off. Uh, you'll see that people uh, functioned okay uh, with the services on live stream, so why should we even bother with having a, a church service? We, we need to, you know what, what the body of Christ really needs, and I think we're going to see some of this? The body of Christ really needs to start believing in miracles, yes. signs, wonders, yes. deliverances, 
We need to start seeing the things that happened uh, back in the days of healing. When Oral Roberts left uh, ORU and went back on the road, it really hurt my heart when he came back and he was, he was really grieved. He was downtrodden. And uh, he said that he was so disappointed to see that the church was so dead. He said, the churches that I've gone into, there's no manifestation of the Spirit. There's no moving of the Spirit. There's no power. And here, here's a man that prayed for thousands, hundreds of thousands of people. Reinhard Bonker, who always, his mandate was, Africa shall be saved. Did you know that Africa is touted now, according to missionary statistics, as being uh, the most Christian nation on the face of the earth? And did you know that they are sending missionaries all over the world? And there are Russian Christians, missionaries, that are being sent all over the world. Asia, I mean, in lieu of all of the uh, fear and tragedy that we're facing, the pandemic, you need to know on the other side, there's a revival going on. There's an awakening going on. I mean, uh, countries are waking up. People are, are responding, but they're responding to the power. They're responding to the uh, healing power, the anointing power, uh, the preaching power, uh, casting out of devil's power. And that's what we need to see in the body of Christ. Uh, let me digress just a minute. And uh, I would like to uh, go to a book that I found. Actually, somebody found this for me and sent it to me. I'd been looking for it, but I couldn't find it. I misplaced mine, uh, and a, a precious sister in the Lord found this for me and gave it to me. It's called World War III by Hilton Sutton. Now, I don't know whether you have asked the Lord, okay, Lord, what's going on here? Why is this happening? We know it isn't from Him. We know He's not sending it. We know He's not using it to chastise His people. That's totally counter the Word of God. And uh, so I went back and reread some of the things in this book. And I'd like to read you uh, a couple of little uh, sentences. Uh, World War III is really the uh, war between Russia and Israel. Uh, you can find Ezekiel 38 and 39. It's when, it's when Russia invades Israel from the north for whatever reason, food, weapons, territory, and this World War III. Now, this is not Armageddon. Now, Armageddon uh, takes place at the end of the uh, tribulation period. World War III, now according to uh, Hilton Sutton, World War III will begin and end in one single day. Now, before World War III takes place, Russia invading Israel from the north, the rapture of the church is going to occur. Now, a lot of people are confused about the second coming, the rapture. There are two separate events. The rapture of the church is the catching away of the body of Christ to meet Jesus in the air. The second coming is when we come back with Him at the end of the tribulation period and everybody sees Jesus. But the rapture of the church, nobody sees Him. It's like Acts chapter 1. Uh, the angel said, Why stand you gazing up into the clouds? That same Jesus that was caught up in the clouds will come back the same way. So we know the rapture of the church, the catching away of the church, takes place before the Great Tribulation period, and World War III follows it right after the rapture, World War III. Now listen to this. World War III is the attempt of Russia uh, to uh, take over uh, Israel. Uh, notice that uh, in the scriptures, you, know, you can read it in Ezekiel, you can read it in Daniel, uh, God calls on nations uh, to supply a sword, which is an implement of war, uh, be, to be brought down hard upon Russia. Uh, they'll strike a powerful nuclear blow, and in one single day, the war will begin and end. Now, this is not the Battle of Armageddon. Don't confuse the two battles. They're separate affairs. Take note that the battle discussed in this book is brought uh, and fought in the mountains of Israel far to the north of Jerusalem between Russia and her satellites. 
Israel and her satellites. The victor is Israel. The defeated foe is Russia. It will take Israel seven months to bury the Russian dead and seven years to use up the fuel supplies brought by Russia into the field of battle. This seven-year period is significant in that it's the same amount of time given in the Scriptures for the tribulation period. Where is the church during this seven-year period? We're in heaven. We're enjoying the marriage supper of the Lamb where we are rewarded for what we've done in the body. <laughs> uh, we're receiving our rewards. The judgment seat of Christ, the marriage supper of the Lamb. Uh, it's also the period of time that separates the fulfillment of Ezekiel 38 and 39 from the battle of Armageddon. Armageddon takes place on the final day of the tribulation period. So that you can distinguish between these two battles, he points out that the scripture says the battle of Armageddon is fought in the plains of Megiddo outside of Jerusalem. The battle of Armageddon is fought between the Antichrist and its armies uh, and the Lord Jesus Christ and His heavenly host. The difference between the two battles, and I have a reason for reading you this. After Armageddon, Jesus sets up a kingdom here on the earth for a thousand years. So there are marked differences between these two battles. He calls it God's conquest of Russia. The dead in Christ are raised up, meet the Lord in the air, then World War III takes place. The prophesied event of World War III is at the beginning of the tribulation, some, some seven years before Armageddon. Now, in May of 2018, Jeannie and I were in Jerusalem uh, for the dedication of the U.S. Embassy. We were able to go over to Haifa to one of Israel's seaports. And I served two years in the Navy on two different warships at sea, and I was very interested. I didn't know Israel had a navy, but they do. And they have what are called frigates. They're about three-quarter size of our U.S. American destroyers. I was on a destroyer. I was able to go aboard ship. I was able to talk to the captain. And I said, uh, why does Israel need a navy? He looked at me and said, because Russia, now listen to this. This was just last year, uh, 2018. He said, because Russia is looking for soft water ports to invade Israel. <laughs> I mean, this is, this is biblical prophecy coming to real life. And he said, we have to protect our ports. Now, these frigates are armed with much more uh, munitions than we had on our World War II retrofitted destroyers. I mean, these, these things have got guided missiles on them. I mean, they've got high-tech stuff. And I also learned that Russia had built bases in Syria just north of Israel's border. So Russia is already in the northern part over the border from Israel. We were on the Golan Heights, the Gaza Strip. We saw the Iron Dome that protects the Israelis from the missiles that are shot uh, from, uh, from Syria. Russia's already got a base in southern Syria, north of Israel's border. Uh, Israel's navy is protecting their soft water ports. They are, as we used to say, locked and loaded, ready for the invasion of Russia to come into the nation of Israel. Now, we're in a little sliver of time, a little window, if you please. Don't let this virus thing totally occupy your every waking minute. Keep the big picture in mind. Yeah. This is just a distraction. You say, but yeah, but Pastor Caldwell, 300 people have already died. Hey, in other plagues and flu and all the things that have happened around the world over the centuries, thousands, tens and thousands, hundreds of thousands of people have died. 3,000 people died on 9-11 uh, in one, one hour, one, one shot at the... Twin Towers. And don't let Satan blow this up. Do what you can to protect yourself, your family. Don't be stupid. Uh, don't be presumptuous or foolish. 
but don't fear. And don't let this thing sh uh, shift your focus on something that is going to pass. Yeah. I, I get real tickled and I also get blessed. Now, you may not like President Trump. That's your privilege. You can hate if you want to, but it'll, it'll hurt you. It'll cost you in the long run. But I get so tickled. And he is bombarded. Can you imagine what that man has to deal with every day? He is bombarded uh, with all kinds of stuff. And every time they take a shot at him, he just sloughs it off and goes on. The other day, there was a reporter that was kind of being a little smart at it and, and said, where do you get off calling this a China virus? He said, isn't that racist? He said, no, it's not racist. It came from China. <laughs> I mean, we, you, you need to pray for your president. But you better thank God that he's a man of the economy and he knows what to do. It doesn't mean he does everything right. You may not like the way he talks or tweets or whatever, but he is our leader and we pray for him. He's the one at the helm. He's the one, and he declared himself the other day as a wartime president, or today, a wartime president. Uh, you know, we grew up uh, during the World War II uh, period. Uh, I served in the Navy at uh, Guantanamo Bay, Cuba incident. Uh, my generation fought in Vietnam. I'm, we, we see what war has done. We're in a war right now, but it's not a war with flesh and blood. It's a war of the spirit. And we know that Satan is behind every bit of this. And there's a bigger picture here is what I'm trying to say. It's not just about viruses and the economy. and all. It's about the end time. It's about the coming of the Lord. And we have a responsibility now to stand fast yes. and not move off of our faith yes. and to witness to people, to tell people what we know, what we believe. And you can't do that if you're feared. You can't do that if you're afraid. You've got to have confidence in the Word of God. You've got to know that God's going to take care of you. <laughs> and then you can pray for people and take care of them. You can demonstrate the love of God. You ought to uh, not stop your giving to your church, to your ministries, to support. You need to keep investing in, in them because all this is going to pass, and then you're going to have a harvest coming to you, yes. a hundredfold. You need to keep praying for people, keep loving people, keep preaching. Don't stop, don't compromise anything. If anything, preach louder, uh, preach harder. Uh, preach more often. Uh, this is the, the time that we're in. So I want to encourage you today, uh, don't give place to the spirit of fear. Don't give place to that virus. Run it out of your house, out of your family. And don't give place to the fear where the economy is concerned. And if you can't watch the news programs uh, without getting fearful or upset, then don't watch them. I mean, I'm not here to plug VTN, but we have two news programs every day that are spirit-filled, uplifting, 700 Club in the morning, CBN News at night, and you can get the information you need, but you don't get all the fear uh, that goes with it. So let me pray for you right now. Wherever you're watching, at home, a hotel, uh, you know, uh, wh wherever you're watching, you may be in your pajamas on the couch or in bed, you know, but you can deal with the spirit of fear. Yes. And I want you to deal with it right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, I command the spirit of fear to loose the people of God. Loose them and let them go. Come out in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for delivering them and setting them free. And Father, if anybody has tested positive for the uh, coronavirus, I come against that virus. I remind you that Jesus' blood healed the host. Heal the person. You have no right in that body. I proclaim Romans 8, 1 and 2. The law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus makes them free yes. from the law of sin and death. Yes. So virus, you die and come out of that body. Loose that body. That's not your host. That's not your body. That's the body of Christ. Loose it and let it go. Fear of finances. I command you to leave the people. Loose their purse strings. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for ministering to all that are watching tonight, wherever they may be, giving them confidence, encouragement, cause their faith to rise up. 
In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Pastor Michelle. Is there anything else that you want to uh, say? Oh, oh, let me, let me, have I got time? I want to deal with one more thing. Go over to Isaiah. I wrote myself a note and I stuck it on a sticky note here. Isaiah, li listen to this. Isaiah chapter 59. Isaiah chapter 59. Now, I know some have changed the punctuation, and I guess that's okay. They can do what they want to do. Isaiah 59, verse 19. So shall they fear the name of the Lord from the west, His glory from the rising of the sun. When the enemy comes in, now this is, this is who we're dealing with, the enemy. He won't wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, rulers of the darkness of this world, and wicked spirits. When the enemy comes in like a flood, now, here's the way I interpret this. You can interpret it any way you want to. The enemy has never been a flood. He can't be a flood. Because a flood is uncontainable. You can contain a trickle, a stream, a river, but you cannot contain a flood. The enemy comes in like a flood. There's a companion scripture over in Peter where it says the devil is as a roaring lion. He's not a lion, but he tries to make you think he's a lion. Yes. The same way here. The virus comes in like a flood. Yes. President Trump, when they were asked, of course, a lot of people want to blame him for all of this and not doing enough and blah, blah, blah. But blame him for this. He said, we were caught unawares. At least he was honest about it. We were. We weren't able to handle something. like We weren't expecting it. The enemy comes in like a flood. Now, you can debate all day and all night about what caused it and what opened the door and we shouldn't have done this and we're killing babies and uh, we've endorsed the homosexual agenda. And all of those things have their recompense of reward, granted. The Bible says that. We've been ungodly. We've not done what we should have done. And America is, you know, faltering and sinful and so forth. You can, you can surmise all of that. But the Bible says when the enemy comes in like a flood, that's what the virus has done. It's come in like a flood. Yes. Overwhelming. The Spirit of the Lord yes. Yes. shall lift up or put him to flight, lift up a standard against him. Now, the standard is this word. The standard is the blood of Jesus. The standard is the Word of God, the name of Jesus, the body of Christ. The standard is going to have to stand up. When I was in the Navy, we flew the standard aboard ship. The standard is the American flag. And we flew it on the fantail of the ship. It never came down. We flew it all the time when we were steaming, when we were in port. Uh, you know, if you read the book of Revelations, when Jesus comes back riding a white horse, he is a standard bearer, and He is going to be our standard bearer forever. And the blood that He shed is the standard that we set against those demon spirits. So when the enemy comes in like a flood, like he has, the Spirit of the Lord will raise up a standard against him. So you need to pray, and you can't depend on ministers, you can't depend on your pastors to do all this for you. You have to do it yourself. You take authority over fear. You take authority over the virus. Uh, honey, I remember when the public school sent our son Ronnie home one day. This is when he was a little boy, 10, 11 years old. Sent him home and said he had mononucleosis. Well, we didn't even know what that was. <laughs> and they said it was the kissing disease. Well, we didn't. He wasn't kissing anybody. He's only 11 years old. Mononucleosis. And they told him he had to come home for uh, a week or whatever it was. And I tell you what, something on the inside of me rose up and I went into his bedroom and I said, you are not staying home for a week or a day. In the name of Jesus, you are the healed. I laid hands on him, prayed for him, and I told him the next day, I said, you're going to school. And he went to school. And that afternoon he came home and said, Dad, they retested me and said I didn't have mononucleosis anymore. You need to take charge. Yes. Take charge of your family your church, your business, your school, whatever it is. <laughs> Hallelujah. So when the enemy comes in like a flood, 
the Spirit of the Lord will raise up a standard. Amen. 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 Praise God. I'll turn it back over to you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. What a steadfast and stable word we have received tonight to strengthen us and give us the fortitude to walk in uh, the fullness of everything that God has for us. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Pastor, for ministering to us tonight. And thank you, Lord, for the word. Amen. I want to remind you that we have a free download of Pastor Steele's book, Fear Free Living, Never Be Afraid Another Day in Your Life. Go to the website, download the book. We're going to be doing some devotionals, some video devotionals each day to uh, um, feed that that truth and that uh, concept into your spirit and stay connected with you during this time. And um uh, so that is available through our website, or you can go to the Facebook and find the post for that uh, and download that uh, PDF copy of the book and follow along with us. And let's uh, allow uh, our strength to remain and for our continued uh, walking in this victory that's ours. The victory hasn't changed. We don't have to let go of our position of victory, and we've heard that tonight. So I want to just uh, remind you, uh, Sunday morning, same time, tune in Sunday morning, Sunday evening. We've got the 10 o'clock service, the 6 o'clock service, and Pastor Steele will be ministering to us. And uh, we're staying connected. Offices are open. If you need us, call us. We love you, love you, love you. Remember, the vision of this church is to build people's faith and to frame their world by the Word of God. And you and I will always be world changers. God bless you.